what's up you guys, Marty Schwartz here. This video is totally different than my normal Tuesday videos, but it's something I wanna talk about. I've talked before on this channel about the advent of technology and how it's made the lives of creative people and basically everyone so much better. You can create and distribute music more easily. You can order things without leaving your home. Generally, everything is more accessible to everyone, but I think we can all agree the experience of buying a ticket is worse today than it ever was before the internet age. Maybe you can blame booming technology advances for this, and many people do, but I think it has more to do with a problem that's been around since the industrial age. Corporate overlords. Specifically, I'm referring to the folks at Live Nation, who almost a decade ago purchased a company that was frustrating enough on its own, Ticketmaster. If you've ever seen a major live concert, you've dealt with them before. They say your ticket's going to be $65, but then an advance admission fee is tacked on, plus a service fee, plus an ordering fee, plus shipping because you can't print them at home, you'd end up having to sell off your limbs in order to take your dad to a Steely Dan concert for Father's Day. This alone is wildly frustrating, but in reality, it's really much worse. Publicly, Ticketmaster has been quite critical of scalpers, the folks that buy tickets and then turn around and sell them again for higher prices. But for years, they've secretly used a program called Trade Desk to allow scalpers to buy tickets, then immediately post them on resale websites, taking a cut on both transactions, which is why all the good seats are pretty much gone even if you try to order your tickets right as they go on sale. It's especially crazy that Ticketmaster has historically been so outspoken about the practice and even has a buyer abuse division that's job is to look for suspicious ticket sales online. But it's not like anyone can do anything about it because Ticketmaster and its parent company are so freaking huge, there's basically nowhere else to go. Let me explain. Like I said before, Ticketmaster is now a part of Live Nation, a company that's also the biggest concert promoter in the world. Over time, Live Nation began to gobble up many of the other verticals in the live concert ecosystem. They began managing artists and buying slash managing venues. With the addition of Ticketmaster, they now control basically every aspect of the live music experience. Ticketmaster would like for you to believe they only set the price of the ticket and nothing else, and the other fees are added by the venue, the artist management, and the promoter. But this is laughable because in many cases, all these folks are also owned by Live Nation. Out of the top 100 venues in the country, Ticketmaster handles the sales for 80 of them. Live Nation manages around 500 major label artists, including U2, Sting, Jay-Z, and Rihanna, to name a few. They own over 60 venues across the country and have ownership of music festivals like Lollapalooza and Bonnaroo. I say all of this to basically point out they've completely cornered the market, and they know it. It's how they can get away with these weird price gouges. There are even a few instances of them using their power to force venues to use Ticketmaster for ticketing, even if they don't want to. Ticketmaster's chief competitor, AEG, claims that Live Nation told the venues that work with AEG that they would take their artists elsewhere if they didn't use Ticketmaster, a possible violation of antitrust law. In 2013, a venue in Atlanta, Georgia was a victim of this practice. They were told that the band Matchbox 20 would be unable to play at their venue. When the boogie manager asked why, the Live Nation representative said, the issue? Three letters. Can you guess what they are? Even though Live Nation claims that their decision to book the band at another venue was non-punitive, it's hard not to be suspicious of their intentions. Even if they don't specifically say venues have to use Ticketmaster, I'm sure it's hard for venues to go with another company solely based on the knowledge that Live Nation and Ticketmaster have so much control and can often negotiate better deals because it's all under one roof. To be fair, rising ticket prices aren't all Live Nation's doing. The artists are also demanding more money because they aren't making as much on album sales anymore. And with concerts becoming more of a spectacle, the price to put on the show and the demand to see said show is going up. But they aren't helping the problem. Lucky for us, artists are trying to take some of the power back from the corporate greed at Live Nation. Pearl Jam famously brought light to this issue many years ago before the Ticketmaster merger. They obviously lost the battle, but they changed public opinion on the issue, and given the new scrutiny of some of Live Nation's dubious practices, they may end up winning the war. Other bands are selling advanced tickets directly through their fan clubs, and some are even going back to the practice of forcing concert goers to buy tickets at the box office like we used to back in the day. While these things are great, they still don't solve the inherent problem. If you're a fan of a Live Nation artist, express your displeasure online. Call your congressperson, and if you feel like you have to, just don't go to Live Nation-sponsored events. There are plenty of small local artists that aren't yet caught up in the Live Nation web. I know it's tricky, you want to support your favorite artist, but you don't want to be ripped off. I don't have all the answers, but I did want to just get this off my chest for a minute, so thanks for letting me do that. If you like or disagree with what I have to say, let me know down in the comments. Also, feel free to share your Ticketmaster horror stories, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to Marty Music. Thanks again, and we'll see you real soon.